today's video. So school has officially ended for me, which means it is the beginning of summer. So this is going to be kind of my first slash my summer book haul. Um, I'm vowing to not buy any more books until the fall time when I want to do a Halloween themed book for all the Halloween video activities I have planned. Hopefully I can stick to that. But until then, this is the summer haul video because it is the beginning of my summer. So I'm just going to get right back into it. Some of these books, note, some of these books I bought like a while ago and have featured in other videos. So I will be talking about those as well. It's just kind of to officially haul all the books that I bought since my most re since my other book haul way back in like January, February. So we're going to get started on this lovely, lovely stack I have right here. So we're going to start off with my current read, which I'm actually almost done with and I'm hoping to finish very soon. And that is The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna. Uh, I bought this from a local bookshop and I am really enjoying it. Everyone is saying it's darker than what they thought it would be. Knowing that, it's not as dark as I was expecting it to be because of it. And I will give very brief summaries on all these books because there are quite a few and I don't want this video to be a million years long. So this is about a girl who when she goes through the blood ritual she finds that her blood runs gold instead of red and that is a big issue because that means she is descended from a demon and so she has to, um, in order to uh, gain her purity back, she has to fight in the king's army for 20 years. So it's her journey discovering herself during that time. Next I have How the King of Elfheim Learned to Hate Stories by Holly Black. This is the very short kind of companion novella more like um, to the Cruel Prince trilogy. Um, I have also read The Lost Sisters which is kind of a one and a half book it's told from Taryn's view but I have already read this and I very much enjoyed it. It's just like a cute little like rainy day read or you just need to finish something very quickly for your Goodreads goal. So I enjoyed this one very much. Next up is You Had Me at Ola and this is by Alexis Daria and this is very cute. It's based off of like a telenovela. So the two main characters um, have both been in and are about to be in the same telenovela, kind of like a soap opera. And they both kind of have their own mysterious past with secrets and they do not like each other, I believe. I believe it's enemies to lovers because that's really the only kind of contemporary romance I read is enemies to lovers. And, um, but they are, their characters are lovers and so it's their journey as they are having to act out their love when they might be falling in love. And this I am saving to read on a vacation in Ecuador because I just think it'll be a fun read to to read. It'll be a fun read to read. Yeah, it makes sense, right? Moving on to I have here The Royal Holiday and this is by Jasmine uh, Guillory? Guillory? I'm so sorry. Um, and I picked this one up kind of on a whim. I was walking by a bookstore, a really old bookstore, and they had a cart of uh, books just for you to take and I saw this and I was like, yeah, sure, why not? Um, so it's about this woman who goes on a holiday and falls in love with a royal brief summary, right? So I might save this a little more towards like winter kind of Christmassy time because it is like a holiday and it's got this little piece of holly here. So I'm wondering if it's a winter holiday rather than like just a summer vacation. Plus it's a darker color book so that's, I'm saving it for Christmas. Now the next three books <laughs> are going to be interesting because, so the next three are I Want to Be Where You Are, which is the debut novel for Christina Forrest. And then this is, so this is about a girl who wants to audition for a ballet school behind her mom's back. So she goes on a road trip with this guy that she does not like at all to try and make it to this secret audition. And then I have Love Boat Taipei, and this is by Abigail Hing Wen. And this is about a girl who wants to go to college and be a dancer or like even apply for companies and her parents are like no you're gonna be a doctor so they tend they send her on the um, they nickname it the love boat program and it's where basically you send your children if you are of Chinese or Taiwanese descent the parents send children to learn culture learn Mandarin or even find a husband hence the love boat part um, 
And it's really cool because this is this author is actually in own voices. She had this experience as well, so she knows what she's writing about. Um, and then finally is Tiny Pretty Things, and I read this one, and actually Shiny Broken Things, or Shiny Broken Pieces as well. Um, so though, though it's a duology, and it's by um, Sona Chare Porta and Danielle Clayton. And so this is about a girl who gets accepted into the New York Ballet Academy, and there's a lot of drama and a lot of sus going on because the girl who was there before her had an accident. So you get like different perspectives of different dancers. And the reason these three books are interesting is may, you have may notice that they are all dance themed, specifically ballet themed, and that is because I, a few weeks ago, did a reading vlog where I was reading all these dance based books that were coming out because I myself was a dancer for 12, 13 years. Um, so I thought it'd be really fun to read what kind of dance based uh, literature was coming out. Um, so if you're interested on my thoughts on any of these books, feel free to check out that video. I will have it up here, but I will also have it linked down below in the description. Next are a few more books that I got at a local bookstore. Again, please support your local bookstores whenever you can, especially in these times as places are opening up, up again and it's safe to go. We want to make sure these local bookstores are staying in business. So from ours, I got With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedos. And I am super excited to read this one as well because I have not read any Elizabeth Acevedo's yet, but I have been wanting to. I want to read this, I want to read Clap When You Land, and like just all of her books. Um, so if I like this one, I will probably for sure be buying some of her other books. But this is about a girl who is a teen mom, but she really wants to go on the class trip to Spain. Um, and she's really interested in cooking, but it's really hard to pursue these uh, the, a cooking career or even just like a trip like that when you are a young mom and so it's kind of about her story and the struggles that she goes through. I don't know too much past that other than look at how beautiful the book is and also 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 look at that. I knew I had to buy it in hardcover because when I saw that hardcover I just whoo, whoo. <laughs> use the book to fan me because it is Oh, it's so good. Then I also got We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Faisal. I'm hoping to read this this month as well. It should be the last book in the on my TBR for the Desertathon that I'm participating in. If you don't know what that is, feel free to check out my TBR video um, that I posted a few weeks ago. That will also be in the description below. Um, but this is a really cool, I believe there are gin in here, but so the main character has to uh, disguise herself and she has to go hunt for her village and she has to be a provider, but that's not necessarily what she wants. And then you also follow the tale of the prince who is not all who he seems. Everybody thinks he's so like stern and political, but he's actually like a good guy, which is very interesting for stories. Like that's not something that's super popular. So I'm really excited for this one and it's going to be perfect for my finale for the Desertathon. Now, one of the most recent ones that I got was Beach Read by Emily Henry. And I'm really excited to read it this summer, hopefully on the beach, but like, we'll see. And this is about two people who go to some sort of cabin or multiple cabins on a lake. And she is a romance novelist and he is a literary fiction writer. So he's supposed to write the next American, great American novel, but they're both, they're both blocked. They both have writer's block. So they decide to switch genres and write in each other's genres and they may also fall in love a little bit. We'll see. It was a thicker book than what I was expecting. Like when I saw people talk about it, it looked like another one of those like really thin, like 300 page contemporaries, but it's, it's a slightly thicker for a contemporary. So I think it'll be very interesting. This next book I got um, from a thrift store because I saw it and I was like, oh my word, how do I not own this? How have I not read it? But it's also on my 100 books you need to read poster or 100 most read books or whatever it is. Um, and that is The Kite Runner, and this is by uh, Khaled Hosseini, and I mean, it's The Kite Runner. Most people know it if they haven't read it in school, so I finally bought it. I'm finally going to read it. If I like it, I'll buy 100 Splendid Sons, but we will see. I also had a friend who used this as the basis for his um, forensic speech, um, and so that was really interesting to watch without having 
read the book, so hopefully it'll make a little more sense to me now. Next up was another one that I found out for free, just buy outside of that bookstore, a different bookstore, and that was actually, I thought The Trials of Apollo by Rick Riordan, and, uh, which is really interesting because the Rick Riordan books that I own are this one, Percy Jackson, and The Red Pyramid. That is it. <laughs> I am so far behind on Rick Riordan. The thing is, I read all the Percy Jackson ones. I started the ones on the Roman mythology, kind of with Jason, and I did read the Egyptian ones, the Red Pyramid, but I haven't really read much since then. I haven't read any of these newer ones. I haven't read the Norse ones. I've been working on the ones that he's been presenting with other authors, um, but... <laughs> so I got, <laughs> I got this one, book five, in a hope that I, in the future, will catch up on owning some of his books. I will catch up on Rick Riordan because, I mean, like, book five, it was free, it's in great condition, I picked it up. And then the next one is also a current read, but I, I started it and then I put it on pause because of exams, and then I started this readathon, so I'm kind of like, I put this book on hold but I'm, I just barely started it. And this is actually Wildcat by J.P. Harker. I was actually sent this by the author. He was kind enough to send it to me for free in exchange for an honest review. So I will read it and I will give it an honest review eventually. I promise. I had a promising start though. I had a very interesting start. And it kind of follows more like Celtic Welsh mythology. Um, yeah, because I believe the author is like from in or around Wales. So. And he has another book coming out, which is super exciting. But this is the first in his um, Caledon Saga. So I'm excited to read this. It's a bit chunkier, but you know what? It's summertime. I will work my way through it. Now, this next book is pretty exciting for me personally. So this book was shipped to my parents' house. And so I was planning on picking it up when we went to visit them and go camping next weekend. But... And I was going to do a whole camping themed reading vlog of this book, but then my parents surprised me in Chicago for my birthday. And if if you want to see a little bit of that, last week I uploaded my birthday vlog. There isn't there's reading at the beginning, but other than that, I didn't do too much. Um, it's kind of a messy vlog, but you know, it was it was a fun time. Um, so she ended up giving me the book um, earlier, and it's exciting to me because I actually helped ever so slightly with the marketing of this book and it is The Stars in April by Peggy Wargo and I created the book trailer for this book actually and I helped um, with some other little aspects of getting this book ready for publication due to my internship. Um, so I've actually met the author and I have gone to some of the events with the author and I was able to learn a lot more about like the process of books. Um, so it's really fun. This is a historical fiction, which it's also the only historical fiction in this haul. Like it's majority fantasy with a weird large amount of contemporary. But the point right now is this historical fiction. It actually tells the true story of the survivor Ruth Becker and how her family uh, were English settlers in India, but then her brother gets sick. So they have to get on the Titanic we all know where that's going, don't we? Um, so yeah, and actually the book trailer for this is also available on my channel. I will also link it down below. So if you're interested in learning more about this book and the true story that it tells, like watch, watch the trailer and you'll hear me as the voice of Ruth and my husband Brennan as the narrator. So just watch it for the support of us if you want to. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to read it. I'm still thinking I'm gonna read it over the camping trip and keep my plan of like the camping vlog with this book because it is very like water-based and um, it's not too long. So hopefully I can get through it in a camping weekend where I plan to spend most of the time with my family and um, playing games, so. But speaking of my parents and being in Chicago, I did get two books for my birthday, and those were a couple more of the Disney Twisted Tale books, specifically these ones. So it, we have, so This Is Love, and this is by Elizabeth Lim. This is the Cinderella retelling, and it has the what if question, 
What if Cinderella never tried on the glass slipper? And I think this is probably going to be one of my favorite twists because it really does twist a major part of the story rather than like changing the beginning or giving a new perspective like some of them had or adding on to the ending like this one does. Go the Distance is the Hercules retelling and it actually just came out. It's by Jen Kalanita and it has what if Meg had to become a Greek god. And so I read the first chapter or two of this one because I was in Chicago and like I had just gotten it for my birthday so of course I was going to start reading it. And it, kind of, it starts right where the movie ends of Hercules being welcomed by the gods as a full-fledged god and Meg is kind of like, okay great, he's a god, what's going to happen to us? And so I believe it, it just is a continuation where she needs to become a goddess and it kind of digs into her past because it has something to do with the boy who broke up af who broke up with her after she essentially sold her soul to Hades to help him. So. So these are the two Disney Twisted Tales. I believe I'm all cut up at the moment. Obviously more are coming out. I believe there's a Rapunzel retelling coming out. But until it does, I am officially caught up and I really need to do a reading vlog where I just sit down and read all the rest of them that I have not read yet. And finally, we have one more book <laughs> that I bought and I was hesitant about putting it in this book haul because it is a book that I bought for fall time and so as I mentioned I'm going to save my money so that when fall kind of, Hall kind of Halloween time comes around I can go on a bit of a bulkier buy there to get all Halloween themed or like you know with mystical creatures or based off of like horror-esque and so I will include it in this video just as a small shout out but just know it will most likely be in the fall haul. Yes, that's fun to say, the full haul. Um, and that is The Raven, and this is by Cass Morgan and Danielle Page. And this has to do with a sorority that is made up of witches, so they are definitely very close to each other. Um, and honestly, need I say more? <laughs> need I say more? Um, so I am really excited to start reading this, but I am going to wait until Halloween when I read a bunch of stories about witches. Hey guys, Editing Laura here. I just wanted to let you know that that was actually not the last book that I hauled. I had gotten another book off of Amazon and it hadn't come yet and then I actually filmed a clip saying yeah, it hasn't come yet but there is one more book to include this haul but actually now later today I have it. So I actually also got A Taste for Love by Jennifer Yen and this is a very fun uh, contemporary story with baking where this girl, her mom very much wants her to marry an Asian American boy and so her mom sets up this competition, this baking competition, and all of her competitors are young eligible Asian American men for her to fall in love with. Um, so I think it's going to be really fun, really sweet. I know, bad fun, I know. But um, so this is actually the last book that I'm going to include in this haul as well. So back to our regularly scheduled programming. Whew. Those are all the books. There we go. We have made it through this large, lovely stack. And now I can put all these books back on my shelf. But thank you all so much for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up to let me know. And I mean, I'm not going to stop buying books. So th there will be more of these in the future. Um, but if you want to see more of them in the future, then make sure you are subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so that you're notified every time I post. And I post every Thursday. Also, feel free to leave a comment down below if you've read any of these books, if you want to read any of these books, or, you know, like what books did you recently buy, what are on your TBR. I would love to chat with you guys down below. Um, but until I see you all in the next video, I wish you a happy reading. Music